Good evening, everyone. You're all very welcome. I'd like to start our service by standing and singing, standing on the promises of Christ our King. Through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God.
Praise God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. We're going to come before the Lord, and again, we're going to remember those that are sick and pray for them tonight that God again will just visit them and touch them and heal them in the name of Jesus. We continue to pray for Darren and Wesley McElveen and June Bellingham and Christina. Continue to pray for Margaret Wright and David Loudon, Sammy Orr and Edna Scott, Beatrice McGarry and Patsy Doherty, Alec Robinson, Dave Borland, Sam Bloomfield, and we do pray for Elizabeth McAreeve. We do pray for uh, Peter Moy, and uh, we pray for Joanne Peden. Philip Archibald, too. We continue to pray for Philip and his family, that God will be with them. Young Andrew, 14-year-old boy, has got leukemia. We we'll pray for him very much. Uh, Ray Laverty and Johnny McCurdy, Gwenny Stewart and Robert Gilmore. Uh, we remember Hazel and uh, we pray for uh, Martin and Liz Moore and Alison McClellan, Bobby Todd, Bobby Archibald. And we pray for Joan Hunter and uh, we pray for her daughter Joanne too. She's just out of hospital and we do pray for her very much that God will minister to her. Ellen Morris too, and, and we pray for Liz, uh, uh, we pray for Robert Hunter, and we pray for Elizabeth Henry, that the Lord will continue to bless her and to touch her and heal her in the name of Jesus. Philip Doak, and we pray for uh, Gillian's mother, Laura Coulter, needs the Lord, and we pray for Laura. We pray for Leon, and uh, a relative of David and Helen's, Pray very much for Joan and Don Logan. Both of them very much need God, and we do pray for them that the Lord will heal them in the name of our Lord Jesus. At least Joan is in the Robinson. At least that's a lot handier for the family, and we pray for God's blessing upon them. Pearl Crawford, too, needs the Lord, and we pray for Pearl. We pray for Martin McGarry and uh, Tommy McCracken, Stuart Boyd. Pray for Iris. And we pray for Ruth McAleese, that the Lord will touch her. Alex's friend uh, needs the, our prayer, and we continue to pray for him. We pray for those that are bereaved, that God will just be with them and comfort them tonight in their hour of grief and sorrow. Pray for the ministry of God's word, that the Holy Spirit of God will take over this meeting, move in a mighty, mighty way in Jesus' name. We're going to ask Brother Hugh, Hugh Hill, Brother, uh, uh, will you bring us before the throne of grace uh, in prayer?
Jesus. Amen. 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 We're delighted to see you all this this evening, and we do give you a very warm welcome in the lovely name of our Lord Jesus. Some announcements to make. Uh, If you haven't had your copy of the current newsletter, you can have that uh, at the foyer as you leave the building. Some lovely little pieces in it. Uh, It's good for reading, so uh, pick up your copy. Looking forward to uh, Friday the 23rd of June, it's a fun night, uh, barbecue, and uh, it's going to be fun and fellowship for all the family, so you're invited to come along and join with us on uh, Friday the 23rd. There'll be a bouncy castle and uh, fun and games, plenty of things to do for those that can do it, praise the Lord. And so do remember that, that's Friday the 23rd of June. If you'd like a CD of any of our services, you can have that by putting your name on the sheet at the back and we'll get you a CD. 50p box is there if you'd like to contribute to that. Uh, The newsletter, we mentioned that. Wednesday at 8 o'clock is our prayer meeting. We're looking forward to another great prayer meeting. We need prayer. So come along and join with us on Friday or on Wednesday evening at 8 o'clock. Bringing us through next to next Lord's Day, next Sunday morning at 11.30 is our breaking the bread service and Sunday school. And then next Sunday evening, our evangelistic service, as always, and I will be the speaker at both these services. So let's pray that God will bless us abundantly uh, in these services in the coming week. Praise his wonderful name. We're going to turn to the word of God now. And we're going to turn to Genesis chapter 1. The book of Genesis chapter 1. The title of my message this evening is A Biblical View of Human Life. Genesis chapter 1, and we'll start reading at verse number 26. And God said, let us make man in our own image. After our likeness, let them, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. We know that God will indeed bless his precious holy word. A biblical view of human life. Over the past years, The subject of life and death has been very much in the news about people wanting to have the right to take their own life when it becomes unbearable. Sadly, we are living in a a world where human life has become a very cheap commodity. No one cares about life anymore. It has become effortless to throw away human life even before it appears in the world through abortion. And it has become easier to discard those individuals that are not worthy, worth, that are 
seem worthless as being a drain on the society. When you come to a certain age, it'll not be too long until they want to do away with those over a certain age. In the Netherlands, uh, which has a policy of legalized uh, euthanasia. And the beginning of the century, there were 11,800 euthanasia deaths in the Netherlands. Those counted for 9% of the total deaths in the Netherlands on that particular year. In other words, early, uh, nearly one out of every 10 people who died in the Netherlands uh, at the beginning of the century died from euthanasia. That's sad, isn't it? They died at the hands of a doctor, a nurse, or a family member. Of all these 11,800 deaths, some 5,491 were performed without the patient's consent. The doctor or whoever it was just came along with a needle and injected them. And you know what it's like in hospital. If a nurse comes along with a needle, you just open, hold up your arm and you, you just take whatever they're giving you. But these people were given something that was going to kill them. And today I want to see what God has to say about human life. I think God's perspective should be considered as, as we think about this matter, the right to live or the right to die. Abortion and euthanasia. In fact, uh, not only does, uh, should God's perspective be considered today, uh, but it should be the final say in the matter. We have no right and no one else has any right to take life. So let's examine life from God's perspective. Let's look at the biblical view of life. There are three statements I would, I would like to make regarding this topic today. God is sovereign in the creation of life. Every human is a special being in God's eyes. You are special in the eyes of a God. Genesis 1 and 26, one of the prime truths that come from these verses is the fact that man is a product of God's creative power and not the result of random evolution. Man is a special creation of God. You will notice that all the, the other animals uh, were brought into existence by the word of God. Man, however, was formed by God out of the dust of the earth and God breathed into him, into his nostrils, life. The fact that God singled out, uh, uh, for, uh, was singled out for a special care in, in the creation, I want you to know that there is a vast difference between humans and the rest of the animal kingdom. A vast difference. There is one of the greatest, this, here is one of the greatest dangers in the entire system of evolution. <clears throat> As uh, it is taught in our schools, sadly, today, if people can be convinced that man is nothing more than a product of ra random selection, then human life loses its total value. You see, if man simply evolves, then he's no different than a dog or a cat. You kill him, and he simply ceases to exist. That's the end. In, these, in their eyes, in these people's eyes who think like that, there is no God. Man does not have a soul and man does not have a spirit that live on. There is no heaven to gain and there is no hell to shun in their eyes. Man is nothing more than an animal and he can be eliminated if it becomes necessary. Those who hold this awful, terrible 
devilish view of things believing that man should live until the quality of life is over, then he should be put out of his misery. And the reason is because these people have no value whatsoever of life. Once we start down this slippery slope, there will be no turning back whatsoever. Today it is babies and brain damaged people. Tomorrow it will be mentally and physically ill people that will be put down as well as old and infirmed. Do these people think about eternity at all? Do they? Do they think that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun? Do they think uh, as they're planning their own death, uh, do they think of where they're going to spend eternity? No, these people are still believing that death is the end. Which, of course, we know that it isn't the end. Far from it. For now, we need uh, to remember that every human being is a special being. We are special. For now, we need to remember that we are very special in God's eyes. He is, he or she is here because they are a special creation of God himself. Let me remind you that there is no person on this earth that is a mistake. No one is a mistake. Every human being is a special being created by totally by God. We are told that man was made in the image of God. This does not mean that man could look like God or that God uh, has the body that looks like a man. It does, not me it does mean that man was created like God in that man is a triple being like a Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In a man, there is a body, spirit, and a soul. God is a three-part being. God is a three-part being. God has intellect with God has uh, intellect with and, and our emotions, and so does mankind. This is the primary way in which mankind uh, can be distinguished from the members of the animal kingdom. Every person who ever comes into this world has a three part. They have a body, a soul, and a spirit. Let's take for a, a moment and examine these three. The body, first of all, the body is a vehicle with uh, which we move through and interact with our world. It is the body that provides a home for the soul and the spirit while we are upon this earth and in this world. Both humans and animals have bodies. And when we die, our bodies will return to the earth. Genesis 3 and 19 says, And by the sweat of your brow will you have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from the dust of the ground, and there you will return. The soul, the soul is the seat of the will, the character, the intellect, and the thought, and the emotion. The soul is where we reason, and we love, and hate and we want, etc. In short, our soul is that part of you that makes you who you are tonight. Your soul makes you self-conscious. The spirit, here is where the, 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 uh, the similarities between man and animal end forever. And while the soul makes us self-conscious and the spirit allows us uh, to be God-conscious, 
Every man that is born into this world and every woman that is born into this world is born dead spiritually. Ephesians 2 and verse 1 says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sin. But when the Spirit of God comes by, it quickens or brings to life. Now the Spirit, when it is within a man, that person will find his Spirit reaching out in faith towards God, which we have done. And after we receive Jesus Christ into our hearts and into our lives, the new spirit of life within a person begins to transform the soul part of man. We become new creatures in God's sight. We have complete new outlook in life. When we get saved by the wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we change. We should change. There should be a change in our lives. There should be a change in my life. The old things that we once did and hankered after, they're gone. And we should have a desire to serve the living God. The old body hasn't changed, but the soul has. All of that is uh, complete. It's, it's complicated when we think of it like this. The soul and the spirit are similar in the manner in which we are used in the spirit life of the believer. When we, live, when we leave this world, the soul and spirit returns to God to be dealt with accordingly. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 7 says, For this, for then the dust will return to the earth, and the Spirit return to God who gave it. That's plain enough, isn't it? The redeemed to glory. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled, but believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Dean Dean uh, mentioned this this morning. The lost goes to hell. Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 8. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. The fact that man is a special creation of God and that he is made in the image of God and has the capability and the capacity to know God proves that man is a special creation in the eyes of God. We are special. Get that into your head. We are special. We who are redeemed by the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ are special in the eyes of God. God determines the dawn of every life. God is in charge of when life is created within the womb. When we think of childbirth, we think of being just a product of physical reunion between man and a woman. It's far more than that. Much more than that. There is a sovereign God behind the scene and determines whether or not life begins. He and he alone determines the dawn of human life. And God and God alone determines when we die. Nobody else. We have no control and we should have no control of when we pass out of this scene of time. But one thing we have uh, to make sure of and that is where we're going to spend 
eternity. That's the most vital thing that you can think about tonight. If you're still without Christ and without hope for eternity, you need to think very seriously of where you're going to spend eternity because one day you're going to come, your life is going to come to an end. And what then? You're not going to die like a dog. We're going to one day stand before Almighty God and we're going to give an account. If we're saved, we will be with Christ for all eternity. All eternity. But if we're not saved, we will hear those awful, awful words, depart from me, I never knew you. Would it be dreadful if someone in this meeting tonight or who sat under the sound of the gospel would hear those terrible words, depart from me, I never knew you. Help us to appreciate the wonderful God that we serve. We serve in a God who is high and lifted up and whose train fills the temple. God who has done so much for everything that I have and everything that I ever hope to have, I owe it to God. Where I am today, it's been God all the way. Wonderful God that we serve. Let me say to you that, and this is serious, one day God will close his hand upon your breath and my breath. He will do that. And you're not going to die like a dog. You are going to stand before Almighty God who will judge you. And the Bible says that except a man be born again, he will never ever enter the kingdom of God. There's no way out. There's no other way. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the verse that I got gloriously saved by. I put myself in the whosoever believeth in him shall have everlasting life. You know something? If you do that tonight, you'll go out of this building saved by the wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and heaven bound. Wouldn't that be wonderful? If you had, were to slip, lay your head on your pillow tonight, knowing that all is well for the great eternity. Are you ready to meet God this evening? Can you honestly and truthfully say that? Yes, I'm ready to meet God. If I die tonight, I'm going on to be with Christ. And the Bible says that is far better. Prepare for it. Prepare for going out of this scene of time. Not by euthanasia, not by any other means. But when God closes his breath, hand on your breath, you're going to die. But what then? Let's pray. <clears throat> our gracious God and eternal Father in heaven, in the lovely name of our Lord Jesus, we bow before thee. And Father, we thank you again for your precious word. Oh God, where would we be today without your word? It's a lamp onto our pathway. It guides us, directs us, leads us keeps us in the paths of righteousness. Father, help us to continue to read it, to explore it, to hide it in our hearts, so that we may sin not against thee, so that we may never, ever go down these roads, Lord, that we've been talking about tonight. But that, O oh God, that we may follow in the footsteps of Almighty God. Father, teach us your ways, so that we may walk in the paths of Almighty God. Father, we pray that you'll bless every head bowed in your presence. We feel for those that have missed this service tonight, Lord, that have stayed at home for no reason. God, we pray for them. Because, Father, being in the house of God, and being with God's people, there's nothing to compare with it. So, Father, we just ask you now that you'll bless us as we part one from the other. Go with us, Lord, and keep us, Lord, safe until we meet again. 
We ask it for Christ's sake. Amen. We're going to sing a closing hymn together. Days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Let's stop. Richly bless you.